All right, focus, focus camera. Come on camera, let's focus, focus. We almost have a shot. Hello, ocean people. Welcome back to Brent Durand Underwater. This is a channel where I share tips and tricks to help you improve your underwater photo and your underwater video. Today, we're talking about autofocus. Sharp focus is critical in capturing and creating an excellent underwater photo. It's one of the foundations of photography in general. You'll notice that most photos that win contests or are published in magazines or books professionally have tack sharp focus on the subject's eyes or another critical area of the composition, except in a few very extreme circumstances. Lucky for us, autofocus in our cameras these days is extremely capable and extremely easy to use. But like anything in photography, we need to understand how it works in order to coach the camera and coach the autofocus system into achieving the best creative results and creative compositions that we can with our underwater photos. Imagine you're composing a scene with a small nudibranch and you're there, you're all set up with your lights and er, 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 er. camera's hunting back and forth and you're having trouble, why doesn't this work? or you're doing a close focus wide angle scene under the Bonka boat and you've got a beautiful reef and a sea fan and sun rays coming through. Not that hot, a little less. Yeah, perfect. Coming through and same thing, camera goes and just can't lock that focus. If you understand how your camera focus works and why you can't achieve focus in those situations or why your photos are just a bit blurry in general, you can overcome those challenges and overcome those settings issues and achieve the best photos possible. This video will share everything you need to know about autofocus for underwater photography, at least the basics, including some of the settings and recommendations from pro photographers. We're going to cover how autofocus works, we'll cover autofocus drive modes and subject tracking, and we will cover autofocus area selection points. Let's start by talking about how your autofocus system works. Most cameras today are using a very advanced phase detection autofocus system and even starting to build in AI or artificial intelligence for certain subject tracking situations. Now, this takes a lot of processing power in your camera, which is why one of the top specs you'll see advertised on new cameras is the processor in the camera or even the dedicated autofocus processor in the camera. That's how much power is being used and we essentially have little computers inside our cameras that are dedicated towards processing all this data to achieve sharp autofocus. So in days past, cameras or digital cameras used a contrast detection autofocus that relied a bit on racking focus back and forth with the lens based on contrast. It would go forward, nope, not good, back, nope, back too much, forward a little less, and, 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 okay, that's good focus, nice. Kind of like a film range finder camera would do with the circles you're trying to line up until you get perfect focus. We've advanced past those days with these uh, phase detection autofocus systems and hybrid phase detection systems where the camera is now processing the data to avoid the hunting of the lens. In simplest terms, your camera will see an image coming in through the lens, record it on the sensor, and that's the image that you have recorded on your memory card. But before that stage, the light will come into the camera, pass through a prism, now that prism will split the image into two images and put them into two different spots on your autofocus sensor. Now, because there's two different spots, your camera will see the difference uh, in distance to subject based on the distance it has split that image onto the sensor, calculate the difference between those and the amount the lens needs to move to achieve sharp focus. It processes all of that in splits of a second and then whoop, moves the lens to achieve sharp focus. Now this is very simplified, but that's a general idea. Your camera is always working and processing that data to ensure you achieve sharp focus the minute you activate that autofocus system. Who is that guy? Reading a manual instead of watching YouTube for all of this great information? Now let's talk about autofocus drive modes and subject tracking. For the most part, our cameras have two different drive modes we need to worry about. Single shot autofocus and a continuous autofocus. If you're shooting Canon, single shot is going to be one shot. If you're shooting Sony or Nikon, it will be AFS for single. 
or if you're shooting Olympus, it will be S-AF. Regardless of what camera you're using, it is the same thing where basically the camera knows you want to shoot one frame, right? You're not using continuous shooting. No, you're going click one single frame and the camera will not let you take that frame until the scene is in focus. So this is great when you have a static subject underwater that is not moving around because you can place a focus point on the camera, you depress, activate the focus, that box goes from red to green or to blue or whatever the color is on your camera, saying, yes, I got focus, click, took the image, it's in focus, great. So one shot is really useful for nudibranchs and crabs or reefscapes, things that just aren't moving around a lot underwater because you want to ensure you have that really sharp focus before you push click and take that shot. Continuous drive mode basically keeps the subject in focus as long as the autofocus system is active. So you are half depressing your shutter and tracking the subject and the camera is always keeping the subject in focus. Now, this is popular with back button autofocus. If you don't know about that, take the time to watch my video on back button autofocus because that's a different way to maintain focus with continuous focus. But you can also do it by half depressing the shutter. And when you're doing that, the camera is keeping that subject in focus as it moves around the frame. So this is beneficial because it's great for action underwater. It might be a nudibranch dancing around or it might be a larger subject swimming through the frame. The other interesting thing with continuous autofocus is that the camera prioritizes shooting the photo over sharp focus. So that means using your continuous focus and holding that half shutter down or the back button focus button, you can shoot any time regardless of whether the camera says, yes, this is in sharp focus. That's different to the single focus we talked about, which only shoots a photo when it's in sharp focus. So this is great for fast action underwater, again, for moving subjects, moving around in the frame. And interestingly, if you dig deep into menu settings on new cameras, there are tolerances between capturing the image regardless of focus and prioritizing focus a little more with continuous focus. So depending on what you're shooting, you can really customize your camera to do what you want it to do to achieve the results you want it to achieve based on the subject you are shooting. So advanced underwater photographers really dig into that and love that for specific shooting situations. Going beyond single and continuous focus, we do have some hybrid systems, but don't worry about those. Just focus on single or continuous or the third topic, which is subject tracking. Now, subject tracking is hit or miss for underwater photography. Think about it. If you set your subject tracking towards people or faces, one, your diver might have a mask and depending on the camera, the distance, the water visibility, it might not be able to pick up the subject's face, maybe not the eyes if they're in a mask and the, the camera can't see the eyes. Or let's say you're shooting a reefscape and you've got this beautiful reef you want in focus in the foreground and your dive buddy in the background. The camera's gonna see that dive buddy silhouette and always focus on the background. And when we talk about focus in photography, we generally want the focus on that nice reef in the foreground and not the diver in background. And I won't get into hyperfocal distance and all of that. We'll save that for another video or leave questions below about that. But suffice it to say that you will want to use continuous and not subject tracking in some of those situations so you can tell the camera where to focus so that you're focusing on the right place or you're eliminating the camera misfocusing or choosing the wrong area of the frame to focus. Eye tracking and animal tracking is another option. And eye tracking will work pretty well if you have a very distinct eye, like a fish in a, a mid-range shot, macro or maybe mid-range, maybe not wide angle, right? So we've got a, a fish filling most of the frame. The eye is discernible, eye tracking will lock on, it knows it's an eye and do well. But if the fish is farther away or it's a different type of subject, that eye tracking might not work. So in that case, turn it off, rely on continuous or single point focus and not subject tracking. With a lot of these situations, there are many variables depending on camera, subject, where you're diving, how you're shooting it. So I always say to try both of those and see what works for you. Try using single or continuous focus by themselves manually and try subject tracking just to see if you get the benefits of that. Obviously, if it does work every time, you've got a lot of great benefits in subject tracking. If it doesn't work and you miss a critical shot because of it, you're gonna be pretty bummed.
Now let's talk autofocus area selection for a single, continuous, and now even a little bit of subject tracking autofocus. The autofocus area is basically the area of the frame you want in focus. Most cameras start automatic and the camera will choose what it thinks is a subject. Oftentimes, this is not good in underwater photography because we want to tell the camera what to focus on. Depending on your camera, you will have a box, like with compact cameras, that you can move around the frame to decide where in the frame you want that focus to be. Think about it like a video game. You've got this box, you're moving up and down depending on the critical point of the, the composition. The subject's eye, the nudibranch's rhinophore, the, the manta's front lobe. Wherever you want that focus to be, um, you can move that box, whether you're horizontal or vertical in orientation. Same thing on more sophisticated cameras. You're going to have a pinpoint, a box, a little cross, and then bigger areas to choose from. Now, usually I like to choose the smaller box because I know more precisely where the focus is going to lock on, particularly with macro and super macro, but you can use a wider area, which gets more beneficial if you have fast subjects entering the frame. Think about it where you're underwater and there's birds coming from different directions and you're not sure where they're going to come from, or you're just being inundated with sea lions and you're not sure where they're coming from. You wanna use that wide autofocus area to grab focus on the obvious subject because chances are it will work well. But if you want to get a shark always coming from left to right in the frame and you want to compose it so that it's just entering the frame, you want to manually move that focus point over so that you lock your composition, you know where the focus is going to be, and you'll compose knowing where you want that focus to be because that's where the shark is going to be in the frame. So that's where you really want to manually control that focus point. Some cameras today are now starting to incorporate uh, subject tracking with some of the smaller areas, which is really cool as well, because now you've got a blend of both worlds, the manual control with that advanced subject tracking, and when you narrow down the area it's searching for that subject, you've got a higher probability of it working well. The other cool thing with area selection is that new cameras the other cool thing with area selection in the last couple cameras from the major manufacturers is that they're using the whole sensor. So instead of being limited to a number of selection points starting in the center and going out in, in uh, cross horizontal and vertical orientation, these points cover the whole sensor. So you can move that point around wherever you want or if you're using the, the subject detection, it will move around the entire frame depending on where that subject goes in the frame. So really useful and really helpful when we're composing these scenes. One final note is that a lot of cameras, even your mobile phone cameras, are coming out with features to help lock in sharp focus. So dual pixel autofocus or focus stacking that will allow you to change the area of focus within the frame. This is really cool if you slightly miss focus and want to adjust, but if you look at these features, they deliver a JPEG as a final image. And as we know from watching a lot of these videos, we want a raw file so we have the most data to process our images with and do things like white balance corrections that we can can't really do with a JPEG. So while those features are pretty interesting and useful, I would stay away from them because the final product out of your camera will be a JPEG instead of a raw image. That said, there's more cool stuff coming with autofocus and focus when you're post-processing. There's software now that can help sharpen images if they're slightly out of focus and can actually save an image and make it look pretty sharp and nice and usable, especially for digital in small format like on your screen or your mobile phone screen for social media. So you can actually go back through your photo library and find those images where you just missed the focus or it was moving too fast or you focus just behind the eye on the ear and that's just not a sharp enough eye. Take those images and fix them with this software and post. It's pretty cool. If you have questions on that sort of thing or what software is available, leave a message below and I'll get back to you. My next video is going to share autofocus tips for underwater photographers. So if there's something you want to know or if you have a tip to share yourself, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to include those in the next video. Subscribe so you know when that video happens or do I say push or tap or click. Either way, do it so you know when the next videos come and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.